What's up guys, welcome to another Tutorial Linux Sysadmin Basics video. In this video I'm going to tie up the remaining things I want to talk about in terms of processes and we'll start getting into the file system and that'll be the next video is the basics of how the Linux file system is laid out. Now in this video we're going to cover states that processes can be in, niceness and other values that we've talked about or attributes of processes that we've talked about but haven't really covered fully. We're going to talk about monitoring both theoretically like in every tutorial that you see and how it's sort of done in the real world and we're going to talk about the proc file system which is the process file system. It's sort of a virtual file system that the Linux kernel mounts to post information about its processes in a way that's easy for applications to get access to. So I'm going to explain what that all means. Okay, so basically the thing that matters here, the concept you have to grasp, is that you have one CPU, or in the case of a modern multi-core CPU, you've got several cores that can each run one real thread and maybe two hyper threads. But basically that's the the golden ticket on your system. Every process wants CPU time and the kernel is really responsible for scheduling what processes get CPU time when. And it's really smart about how it does that. So for example, um, you know, if something is waiting for some input from the keyboard, it doesn't really need much CPU time. If something is waiting for some information from a CD-ROM or from a drive to be read and passed to it, it doesn't need CPU time at that moment. It's sort of waiting for something. Now there are some things that have enough information, they've got whatever they need in their memory, and they need time on the kernel to compute some things and get an answer and give it back to the user or the process that called them or whatever. So there's four states that a process can be in. One is runnable, so that is something that is eligible to be scheduled for CPU time. So it has all the information it needs, it can just get run the next time the CPU has some free time. A process can be sleeping, that's the second state, so that would be waiting for something. A process could be uh, in a state called the zombie state, so that's a process that's finished doing whatever it's doing and it's waiting to kind of give back the information it's come up with and then be killed by the kernel. And we've we've also got the stopped state. So that is a process that is may have been in the middle of doing something, but because of some other process sending the sig stop, the stop signal to it, or you could even send a stop signal from the terminal, because it's gotten one of those signals, it is stopped and waiting for the sig cont, the continue signal to resume whatever it was doing, sort of pick up where it left off. So you basically have something that's running, something that's sleeping or waiting for something else to get it what it needs, something that's stopped and waiting to be resumed, and something that's a zombie state, so something that has finished and waiting to exit. Okay, so we've got these four states. If you, for example, have a lot of zombie processes, uh, it can be useful to check for the parent PID, the PPID, for the likely source of this problem. So if some process is spawning a whole bunch of other processes that then go into a zombie state, uh, it probably means that the parent process hasn't collected the sort of finished output of those processes yet, and that's why they can't die, so they're in a zombie state. The most common tool, probably, that I've seen in action in a real Linux environment is TOP for monitoring processes. Now, you might have seen me pull this up before. I think we've talked about it before in a previous video. But this is a fairly simple thing. It, it automatically sorts by uh, percent of the CPU used, so the the things that are eating the most CPU time, you can see at the top, and in this case it's Compiz, which is the the desktop screen effects whiz bang crap that uh, Unity has. Um, it's the desktop compositing process, but you can see up there, 
you can see how many things you've got running, what state the tasks are in, how many zombie processes you have. So if you see a whole bunch of zombies, you know to look at those processes, look for the parent process ID, and see if that parent process is maybe frozen, and that's why it's not picking up the final state from its children, which is why they can't die. You can see how much memory you've got, how much is used, uh, and how much is buffered. But in real life, actually a little bit more useful is, and you've seen this on almost all my videos, is HTOP. Now if you don't have HTOP, um, I, you need to install it. Like this. But you'll see in a second, I've already got it installed, obviously. So once you do have that installed, just launch it with HTOP. And this has got, I think, just a much nicer interface. Um, and it's got a few advantages. One, that you can scroll to see the entire command used to launch a process. So some of these get really long, especially if, if they're called deep in, in like some mounted file system where the path is going to be super, super long. So that's useful. Also, to send signals, you can just scroll to a process that you want to send a signal to. Uh, so for example, if we launch Firefox, just to show this. So here we've got Firefox loading, obviously to a Deus Ex related page. And you can see it taking up all that memory and some CPU time. Uh, and you can see its process ID, etc. So you can send it signals directly here by pressing, you can see at the bottom are all the shortcuts. The F keys is what you use. So kill, remember, it's not just to send the kill signal. It's just sending signals in general. So when you hit F9, whatever process you've just selected, in my case, Firefox, will stay selected. And you can scroll up and down the signals here that you want to send. Now, a 9 would be a very mean way of killing this thing. You can see 15 is the default signal to send, which is a term signal, which is one that can be handled or blocked. It, it allows the process, most of all, to shut down nicely. Remember, kill 9 just instructs the kernel to murder the process where it stands, which means you can often have like some corrupted data or other problems. You really just do that if something is not responding to any of the signals that it can, that's it's allowed to handle or ignore. Uh, but you can see, you, see, you can send all the signals here by scrolling around and then just hitting enter. So if we just wanna ask it to terminate, nicely, of course, get over to 15 and just hit the enter key and, and it will, you can see, Firefox has closed in the background. So that's just a demonstration. Um, HTOP has a bunch of other really nice features. You can just play around with it if you want, and obviously look at the man page, because that should be your first step in exploring any new program, is read the man page. Have, just poke around. You don't need to read it you know, beginning to end. But just familiarize yourself. What kind of options are there? Uh, if you scroll down to the end, is it a nice man page, like in BSD Unix? I mean, does it have examples at the end? Those are often really, really useful. So there you go. That's HTOP. Scrolling, it's just a much nicer interface to managing processes. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out, we discussed niceness. Now, niceness is a value that basically instructs a process to be, well, determines how nice a process is to other process. And you can see here, that is the, I guess that's the fourth column, NI, and how nice this process is to others. That is how respectful it is with its use of resources. There's another way of just saying the priority of this process is high or low. Normally, we would nice a process by saying, uh, for example, uh, eh, let's give it a low priority. The higher the priority, the sorry, the higher the number, the lower the priority. So, for example, for being very low priority, uh, I think Linux processes go from negative. I always forget. Is it negative twenty to to nineteen? Yeah, uh, they go from negative twenty, which is if I said negative twenty here, that's like this is ultra critical. Run it before anything else. This kind of thing will 
make your computer feel like it's freezing up basically because all the CPU time that's available or as much as possible will go to this task. So if we let's say are running a much less important backup task, remember our upper limit is 19, so this is like three shades out of almost 40 um, below the least important one. So we're going to be really, really nice to other processes and say be 15 nice, and uh, you know then we would just call the task. So some backup not important at all task. This is something that's not time critical, something that doesn't have to be done right now. And especially on a production system, like for example, a web server or anything that's customer facing generally, you will want to be very careful not to run things that will grind everything else to a, a halt. And this is one way of doing that. So you launch the process with nice. Once a process is running, for example, we're going to run HTOP. We're going to open a new tab. We're going to find where's HTOP. Uh, 2744 is HTOP. So now we can do something like renice. Uh, let's not do it too low, or else my computer really will feel like it's freezing up and I won't be able to kill it anymore. Um, 2744. So this is a way of renicing something. So basically changing the niceness, changing how nice it's being to other processes. And so here I would, I would take this thing from whatever the initial value was, generally zero, to something else. Oh, I'm not root. My bad. So obviously to renice the process, you need to do sudo. So there you go. And it even gives you a, it says, oh yeah, for this process ID, it was running at zero, the default niceness. And uh, we're actually making it more important now. It's running at negative five. Remember the bottom end of this is negative 20. And you can see what's running at negative 20. You know, almost nothing. These are like, here's some things that are running at negative 20. These are like super important kernel processes. And most of all, they, don't, they take hardly any CPU time and almost no memory. It's just that they're really important and they need to keep running. So generally, you don't want to set anything to the maximum or the, the minimum niceness, the least nice, so the, the highest priority, because it really will just block other stuff and um, your computer will slow to a crawl and it will be horrifying until you can re-nice or kill them, which can often take minutes if it's running at a really high priority and it's something that takes a lot of CPU time. So I hope that makes sense about niceness. Now, again, I just want to show you in HTOP, um, we can see here, there's HTOP uh, running, and you can see the niceness has been updated to negative 5. And if we want to change the niceness, we can just do this right here. So it's easier than hunting for the for the PID and then changing the niceness with re-nice. You can see if you just do F7 or F8, you can modify the niceness right in place, just whatever you've selected. So let's say this one, we want to lower its priority. I'm just hitting F8 right now. And you can see the niceness changing, right? You can see it scrolling up. So now this is becoming less and less important, which means it'll probably update a little bit less or slower. Because now it's just being scheduled less frequently by the processor. Okay, so that's a really common way of, of dealing with processes. Now, you're not going to have to do this like every day if you work as a system administrator, but you need to know that that is a common thing to look for. If you're on a new system and it's slow to a crawl, the first thing you do is open up top or HTOP, whatever you've got, and start looking. What's taking up the most memory? How much memory is free? What's taking up the most percentage of the, the highest percentage of the CPU? Are there a lot of zombie processes, which might indicate that there's some kind of, that their parent process is somehow blocked, frozen, doesn't have high enough priority and is sort of failing to catch up with all the child processes that are trying to finish and exit. This kind of thing. So I hope this gives you an overview of those things. I want to talk about one more thing and I think we're going to do it in the next video because we're sort of out of time and that is the proc file system itself and that will be sort of our introduction to the Linux file system. Most of these values that are being read out here from things like top even some things like PS, the kernel is keeping 
up-to-date information about the processes in a virtual file system uh, that's mounted at slash proc the process file system. You can learn about that here for now, but we'll discuss it in depth in the next video. So I hope that gives you a fun little teaser for the next time. And then we're really done with processes and we're going to move on to the Linux file system and you're going to be very, very, very comfortable moving around it and knowing where everything is and where to do things. See you in the next video.